We all know that oxygen is vital to our bodies. Our cells use up oxygen for energy and create carbon dioxide in the process. This may sound simple, but a lot of processes work to make this happen. For one, uh, how are oxygen and carbon dioxide even transported? So in this video, I hope to answer some of those questions. All right, so for starters, oxygen has two methods of transportation. Let's start with hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is what allows the red blood cells to carry oxygen. Hence, hemo for blood and globin because it's made of globular proteins. To be precise, these proteins are four polypeptide chains, two alpha and two beta. A heme group is attached to each chain, and these are actually responsible for blood's red color. Each heme contains the iron atom, which act as binding sites for the oxygen. Therefore, each hemoglobin can hold up to four oxygen molecules at a time. 98% of oxygen is carried this way. 98%. You can imagine that this would be the main transfer method when you realize that there are 280 million hemoglobin in one red blood cell. In addition, there are 4 to 6 million red blood cells in just a microliter of blood. So, that's a lot of hemoglobin, and that's a lot of transported oxygen. But what about the remaining 2%? These rebels flow outside the red blood cells in the fluid part of the blood called the plasma. However, oxygen isn't very soluble. That's why only 2% have dissolved the plasma. Most of them just hitch a ride on the hemoglobin. Now, carbon dioxide has three methods. To start, let's revisit hemoglobin. But this time it's carbon amino hemoglobin. So 10 to 15% carbon dioxide is carried this way. The carbon indicates the carbon dioxide attached, as you may guess, and the amino refers to the amino acid on the hemoglobin that carbon dioxide binds to. Because carbon dioxide binds directly to the globe and not to the hemes, um, carbon dioxide and oxygen do not compete for the same binding sites. So if we were to reimagine hemoglobin as a train cart, the seats would represent hemes, and oxygen are like passengers that ride on these seats. And then the carbon dioxide, so competing for the same seats, they you know grab onto the rail, and of the train itself, amiably hitchhiking, where it simply holds tight as the blood moves through the body to the heart, pumped into the lungs, where it diffuses into the alveoli and is finally exhaled. Caution to never mix up carbon dioxide with carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is a selfish, vile, repugnant beast. It Unlike its innocent cousin, um, it prefers the iron seats, so it steals the binding sites from the oxygen and refuses to give them back, rendering the victim unable to breathe. This is called carbon dioxide poisoning and can easily prove fatal, but back on topic. Carbon dioxide doesn't always bond to hemoglobin when it enters the cell. In fact, it usually runs into water. So with the help of enzyme called carbonic anhydrase, they form carbonic acid. But carbonic acid is very unstable, so it breaks into hydrogen bicarbonate ions. Um, the car bicarbonate then leaves the red blood cell, and since it's negatively charged, chloride ions from the outside take its place within the blood cell to stabilize things. This is called a chloride shift. The bicarbonate then rides along the plasma to the heart, to the lungs, where it's converted in reverse back to carbonic acid into water, carbon dioxide, and exhaled. This method transports both the carbon dioxide in your body. So, yeah. These chubby little snowman molecules do the bulk of the work carrying the carbon dioxide. <laughs> then that back there is a lone carbon dioxide. This actually isn't as rare to see as oxygen, since carbon dioxide has a higher solubility. And the remaining 7% of carbon dioxide is transported that way. Note that this higher solubility is very important, since oxygen has a higher pressure gradient. Um, carbon dioxide's higher solubility balances each other out, allowing the two to move at the same rate as they do for healthy breathing, and a healthy life for that matter. <laughs> By the end of this, I pretty much lost my voice. So, um, I'm just going to conclude this video at that. Thanks for watching. Um, I really hope that, at the least, I made the topic as painless as possible for you. So, with that, um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs>